All right. <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, just as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweshai, Bahashem Rakak Wadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashem Kurash, the holy tongue for the one true name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the creator of all energy whom the world ignorantly calls God or Allah, which both of those words are simply titles meaning power. All right, as it is written, Acts 4 and 12, there's no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. All right, so it's just that simple, man. There are many titles for the Heavenly Father. There are many titles for the Messiah. But yet, there's only one name, man. And that name is Yahweh, and that name is reached through who? The Messiah, the only vessel to overcome this flesh so that we can now overcome this flesh, man. All right? And that's he whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Though the letter J wasn't derived until the 16th century. All right, his one true name being Yahweh Shai, which is why we say Bahashim. Yahweh in the name is what Bahashim means. Yahweh Shai. All right, we reach the Heavenly Father through the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, man. All right, now we have a way to return. You see, this thing ain't about just being an Israelite. This thing ain't about just wearing fringes. This thing ain't about you being over your fellow man but really over your former self. But before we get into the lesson, I'd also like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles at GMS Grant Millstone, who taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right? And salutations to all those of you, my fellow laborers, you Israelites, who are doing the best to make your calling of your election sure by what? Offering your body as a living sacrifice, man. All right? In a sense of what, man? You you casting down the members of this flesh, the members of your body, to conquer that former self, as I aforementioned. You see? Here it is. We're living in this world surrounded by filth, man. Surrounded by nastiness. All right? And we have been called out of it, man. We have been brought out of this dark place. And now... Right after going through the, the process of having this world purged from you. All right, we're reliving, man. And Yahweh Shai said it best, man. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, some scriptures. This is the book of John, chapter 3. And, uh... We'll start at verse 3. It says, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot receive the kingdom. You see that, man? You have to be born again. Basically, we got to become newborn babies all over again because the simple fact, you see, that this world is, is, is wicked. This world has polluted you, man. This is the book of uh, Micah, chapter 2, and verse 10, and it reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not our resting place, man. This, this system is built up for our captivity. You see, a lot of people fail to realize, man, that when the so-called Emancipation Proclamation took place, what happened to the slaves, right? They just what they just they just opened up some sort of gate and and sent them on out of it. They said, "Go ahead and go be free. Go live among the lilies of the field." <laughs> Come on, man. What do you what do you think happened? They began to earn wages for their labor. You see, that was the sense of freedom that was given. All right, but this also meant that they could be charged for their necessities. In other words, your food, right, toothpaste, deodorant, all right, whatever was being used in that time was what was being charged for, the basic necessities to live, man. Now, what they did is they set up storehouses, all right? These storehouses, the prices were set up to be just at a, at a point that it was just barely enough. So what it would do is it would put these families into debt, man. 
So they were basically became legal slaves, all right, to the uh, to the dollar. And that's ultimately what America has become as a corporation to keep these people as slaves, man. Here you see it. I'm at the plantation right now on my break, man. All right. So again, arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is defiled. This place is defiled, man. They've given you what what's called bread and circuses. Bread and circuses is something to keep you entertained at the show. All right. Well, the circus is the show. So they've given you the shows and they've given you the bread keep you fed, keep you entertained. Hey, you're just going to keep on going on in this system. All right. That's ultimately like a hamster wheel of you just running and you ultimately destroying yourself, man. We're not learning anything to better ourselves. We're not learning how to conquer our fellow man or our former self. I mean, it's a lock you. Simply you learn, you, you get some sort of pride out of just right. Being over your fellow man. And look at, look at yourself, man. Wondering why we're in the conditions that we're under. And yet you're partaking in this world, man. You see? We've been taught to destroy ourselves. That's why you see these different music artists and things of that nature. And they promote lives that they don't even live, man. They don't even live the lives that they promote. Because what it does is it severs your tie from your power, man. And you've became polluted by this. You got Jake over here running, trying to be just like Esau. And then you got Jake over here trying to be, you know, trying to, trying to, to fulfill complete wickedness. Cause that's the vibration he was pushed. And they even, uh, took religion and added that to the scriptures, man. So even for those of you who have a zeal who try to follow the most high, you wound up in the Christian or Baptist church being told that the laws are done away with, but yet to repent. Well, 1 John 3 and 4, the, 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 the laws are what, man? The breaking of the laws, that is. That is the acting of sinning, man. The definition of sin, according to the scriptures in 1 John 3 and 4, is you breaking the law, man. But yet they tell you that the law is done away with. Yet they tell you they tell you to give them tithes. So now the, the definition of sin has been left open to interpretation according to whoever your pastor is, your teacher, who you've been listening to, man. All right. So again, hey, they got you, Jake's destroyed on all sides in this system, man. All right. It says, because it is defiled, it shall destroy you yet with utter destruction. And uh, let's see, this is uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, and it reads, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it is better, un it has happened unto you, unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his vomit again. Right, so this proverb, right, the dog is returned to his vomit again, that represents, right, that vomit. What happens when you vomit, man? You vomit because your body is trying to uh, get rid of some sort of impurification, man, some sort of disease, some something that does not belong there. Filth, right, pollution as we read, because it is polluted. We've been polluted. So when we come into this truth, what happens, man? You begin to spew it out. You begin to throw up. You begin to go through, really, you begin to go through hell, man. You get tried. We all have a sense of, uh, of of being tried when we first come into this truth, man. And that may come in the form of you having to get to and from camp. That may come in the form of uh, of you having to, uh, you know, of you having to, to, to lose your woman, of you having to lose your, your, your job, right, your house, your children, your kids. You see? You are going to have to go through it to get to it, man. Again, you making your body. What did I say in the beginning of the lesson? Those who are making their body a living sacrifice, man. We've given up our lives in this world. We've accepted that that old nigga who you once were has died. We threw him up. What, go, what happens to your body when you go, when you, when you quit doing drugs, right? You go through uh, what they call... Um, 
what they call, <clears throat> which I'm drawing a blank right now, Salakia. Um, withdrawals, Salakia, withdrawals. All right, and your body, you start going through, you throw up, and you you basically become like like the like you gonna die, man. You get ready to get. Some people do give up the ghost. You see, so your your body withers all the way down. And then what happens, man? You begin to get healthy. You see, and to sow that which was washed, you begin you begin to be washed, man. You begin to be. What happens after the washing? You're clean. But guess what? To her wallowing in the mire. But when you go back in the world, it's like you jumping straight in, straight back into uh, uh, what is mire? Poop. You jumping into a, a a pile of poop and wallowing around in it, right? Because you got this filth off you, and now you've just jumped fully back into it, man. All right. So hey, you know we got to get rid of this filth, man. And how are you going to get rid of the filth? It's the good fight of faith, man. This is Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 and verse... Verse 13, it says, When then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. And what's, what's that which is good? The law. It says, That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Right? The law is spiritual, man. But we are what? Carnal. Again, we must learn how to conquer ourselves, man. We must learn, just as Yahweh Shai overcame the flesh, we must do that. But don't get it twisted, man. You are not going to be perfect, right? That's why we needed Yahweh Shai, man. That's why we needed Yahweh Shai. Let me go ahead and grab another scripture real quick. This is 1 John chapter 1. In verse 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we ourselves, and the truth is not in us. You see that? We deceive ourselves. Like we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So if you say you don't have sin, then hey, you've deceived yourself, man. You see, the bottom line is, we're learning to come out of this world and we're learning how to fight this flesh, man. And we're going to continue this fight until the coming of Yahweh Shai, who already overcame this flesh. And therefore, through him unlocking those chains, we know that he's going to fully restore us upon his coming, man. And so for some of us, hey, that may, that, that may be done. That transition may be done sooner than later, man. You may actually give your life up for the throne of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And it's not that what Yahweh Shai had done. Right? We got scriptures in that in the Thessalonians. All right? Comfort one another in these words. You see? So the bottom line is we all have our walk, man. And it's going to start with you being tried, you spewing out that filth, that sickness that's been upon you. And then you're going to begin to grow, man. All right? And you're going to have what's known as what? The good fight of faith, as I had mentioned. It's a, and, and this good fight of faith is either going to result in your death and your destruction or you being stored in immortality, man. You overcoming this flesh. You see? Pursuing the 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, which we'll grab if we, you know, if the Spirit allow us to get time to do so, man. It says... <clears throat> If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So really, in a sense, the elect does not have sins, man, because those sins have been forgiven them. 
You see, what happens when someone receives correction is you have one that argues against the correction, don't learn a damn thing. Then you have the other one who what learns accountability, man. Atones for their sins, atones for their deeds. Doesn't sweep them under the rug, but learns from them. You see, and grows, fights this flesh more and more, man. It says he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say <clears throat> that we have sinned, forgive me, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Hey, so if you say, if we say we had not sinned, we make him a liar. Why? Because as I just mentioned, man, we've been given Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. So therefore, there was a need for that. If there wasn't, if, if, if we could be perfect, if some of the people could be perfect, we wouldn't have needed Yahweh Shai, man. We would have just needed those perfect people. And, and, and the Most High would have restored the nation through them, man. Hey, you would just, really, you would just need one man out of every tribe. You would need 12 men. Right? Because what did he say in uh, 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 the book of Micah, man? Or what is that? Malachi. We'll grab that here in a second. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Right? So if anybody tries to tell you that they're perfect, man, hey, they don't got, they don't got the truth. This person's a liar. You see, we are all subject to death, man. We are all subject to Yahweh Shai, which is we all, which is why we all, when we call upon the Heavenly Father, how do you do it? Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right, you're just too impure to, to reach out to him like that, man. We all are. This is Malachi chapter three and verse six, and it reads, for I am Yahweh, I change not. Right, and because he's the most high, which is not no man to change his mind and his word and his judgment, what's that mean? Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Well, that means that all these promises made with Jacob, he wouldn't allow them to just be consumed and destroyed, man. Again, he could have restored all the 12 tribes out of one from each tribe. But guess what? It was written that there would be one that would overcome for us, man. Basically, Yahweh Shai is the scapegoat. He's the blood that they put on their doorposts during the Passover, which is ultimately why we drink the wine during Passover, man. This is to, to commemorate and to, to proclaim who we are, man. We are reborn through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, man. We have spewed out that, 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 that filth. And we're beginning to, to, to drink out of what? The, the wells of, of living water, man. And call la Yahweh ba Shai for that because now we could really see. You see, it's like we've been get, been given goggles and you could see right through this world, man. We've been given the spirit. You see? So we really got lucky, man. Going back to Romans chapter 7. In verse 15, it reads, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. Hey, so he says, That which I do, I allow not. So he fights his flesh, man. It says, For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. So, hey, man, you have those 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 times where, you know, you, you catch yourself slipping. Hey, that that's natural. You see? But again, we've been quickened to fight that natural man. We've been given the tools, the armor, the shield to fight this devil, man. You see, which really ultimately is your flesh. Your biggest battle is against yourself, man. The apostles always go in on that. And this is the reason why. Verse 16, it says, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good, you see. So, hey, the, the, we have the law, so we know how to fight this flesh, man. We consent to the law, so, hey, we know how to, how to, how to, how to fight that which, we would, that which we would not, man. That which we would not want to do. <laughs> we know how to fight it. Going back to verse uh, 7, what do you say? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. Hey, so what caused him to fight against that lust? The law saying that thou shalt not covet, man. In fact, let's go ahead and run it to uh, 
1 Corinthians 15 now to expound upon that. In fact, I'm going to go to the concordance while we do it. So this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we'll run it down to verse 50. Six. It says, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law, right? So the strength of sin, what strengthens us against sin is the law, man. You see the sting of death. Let's go, and that's why I wanted to grab the uh, concordance. Let's go into the word sting there. <clears throat> Strong's G 2759. Kentron. Kentron. Because this ain't no regular dictionary. It's the biblical dictionary that defines each word all right in its original root meaning which is why they classified it by the g and the 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 uh right the the letter sequence that it that it put forth man the number sequence and the letter sequence going on it says a sting as that of bees scorpions locusts since animals wound by their sting and even cause death Paul attributes death personified as a sting, a deadly weapon, right? So just as that animal, right, it stings you, you see, that's that wound that it's describing. You see, so let's read it again. The sting of death, so that act of, of what actually is bringing that death that may have came in the, the instrument of a, of, a, of a, you know, a flying bullet, but really that was a sting, right? The sting of death in whatever way, shape, or form that death came, right, is sin. Ultimately, sin is what brought it to you, man. You see, that sting is is is, is that is as that sin. It may have been in the form of, like I said, a flying bullet, but really it was that sin. All right, which brought forth your death. It says, and the strength of sin, so what strengthens you against that sin, against that bullet, right? What is what a helmet? <laughs> hey, you know where I'm going with it, man. The spiritual armor, right? Is the law. You see that spiritual armor, ultimately we know how to put that armor up, how to how to throw it on, right? Because the law tells us what all of it is, man. How to fight this flesh, the good fight of faith, man. So that we could fight it knowing and understanding that as so long as we get found doing fighting this flesh and not bowing the knee to this devil in his image then hey we're going to be found with favor with the lord man you see we all are approaching our moment of radshak neshak and abednego but rather than bowing down a physical image you see as they did in their times this is the digital age man we're bowing down to the digital image man we're bowing down to this devil we're bowing down to 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 his ways right his visage we're bowing down to him and his sin. But hey, we, those of us, the elect Lord willing, we will not bow down to him, man. We will stand firm. We will not give up because guess what? We've been fighting this flesh. Our knees, our legs, our, our, our stance has been getting firmer and firmer and firmer. This armor has been getting stronger and stronger and stronger and now we're approaching that time where it'll be tested and we've been battle tested we've been trained well man just like it says in the 300 right ow 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 that's us man lord willing you see and the, for those of you who haven't been building up hey dark times are ahead man you better take heed unto what it is you're doing right because as the scriptures say wisdom cometh by the opportunity of leisure you see we must learn to fight this flesh. We must learn to, to kill this flesh, right? 
which ultimately brings us to a point of not giving a damn about this flesh, man. So when Jacob's trouble comes, it'll be very easy for you to say, fuck it. I will starve to death if that's what it takes. Whatsoever comes your way, man, Lord willing you endure through it. Lord willing this edifying. Until next time, this is the Brother Gar. All praise is honor and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the Abbas and the Apostles at GMS Great Millstone. And a sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations unto all those of you hopeful and faithful members of the elect, wheresoever you may be in these last days. All right. Shalom.